All right, Summer Bridge peeps, today we're going to be learning how to solve equations using addition and subtraction, okay? So what does it mean to solve an equation? Um, basically, that means we're going to end up with something that looks like I want x equals some number. So basically, I want a variable, could be x, could be y, could be z, could be whatever, and I want it to equal a number. Um, to solve, there are two rules. So we're always going to do the opposite, also called the inverse, of what's being done to the variable. Okay? So I'm always going to do the opposite of what's being done to the variable, and then what I do to one side, I'm going to do to the other side. Okay, now, um, some opposites or inverses. Um, I know that addition, its opposite is going to be subtraction and vice versa. Subtraction's inverse, um, inverse or opposite is going to be addition. So if they're adding something to the variable, I'm going to subtract it. If they're subtracting it, I'm going to add it. And that does not look like a C at all. <laughs> okay, so let's look at some problems. So it says solve each equation. So I have an equal sign, therefore I know it's an equation. So here I have x. I'm going to ask myself, what are they doing to the variable? They are adding a 3. So the opposite or the inverse would be subtracting a 3. So I'm going to subtract a 3 here. You can draw your wall if you want to for the equation sign because they're on opposite sides. What I do to one side, I'm going to do the other side. So I would get subtract 3, draw your line. Um, 3 minus 3 goes to 0, so it cancels out. And I'm left with an x on the left side. I bring down my equal sign, and then I would do 5 take away 3, which is a 2. Okay? So I have x equals something, and so I'm done. Okay, again, you can always plug in your answer to check it and substitute that back where it goes. So 2 plus 3 does give me 5, so I've checked my work. I know it's right. Okay? All right. On number 2, you have h plus a 3. So the opposite of adding a 3 would be subtracting a 3. I'm going to draw my wall. What I do to one side, I do to the other side. 3 minus a 3 goes to 0, so it cancels out. I'm left with h equals... And then I would just type in the calculator or do it by hand, negative 8 minus 3. Since the signs are the same, I'm going to add them to get an 11. And I'm going to keep the sign of that number and leave it as a negative 11. Okay? Um, on 3 and 4, go ahead and press pause and try these two on your own. So hit the pause button and then I will throw up the answers and we can check them. Yes, press pause. All right, so in number three, they were subtracting seven, so I added seven to both sides. 14 plus seven was a 21, so P equal 21. On number four, they were subtracting six from the variable, so I added six to both sides. And since your signs are different, you're going to have to subtract them to get a one, and then keep the sign of the bigger number, negative one. All right, what about these? These look a little bit different, so why are they different? I have a number or coefficient in front, and then I've got my variable followed behind it. These tend to trip people up because you can't tell whether they're positive or negative. So this 6 out front is a positive 6. Okay, So the opposite of a positive 6 is going to be a negative 6. So what I do to one side, I do to the other side. A positive 6 and a negative 6 go to 0. I bring down my x, I bring down my equal sign, and then 10 take away 6 is going to be a 4. Okay, so when you've got a number out front, you have to ask yourself whether it's positive or negative and then do the inverse of it. So on number six, I have a positive two out front. So the opposite of a positive two is a negative two. I'm going to do that to both sides. Two minus two goes to zero, so it cancels, leaving me with x equals and then a negative two and a negative seven. They're the same, so I'm going to add them to get a nine. 
and keep the sign of my larger number, so negative nine. Okay? All right. Let me know if you have any questions on these. Otherwise, we're going to move on to some trickier problems. Decimals and pluses and minuses. So, when you see two symbols like this, um, technically, in algebra, you only need one symbol. So you could look at it like this and say the opposite of a negative 3 is to add a 3. You could look at it that way. And then what you do to one side, you're going to do to the other side. Okay? You, those will cancel out, leaving you as z equals 12 plus 3 would be a 15. Okay? One way you could do it is you could rewrite the problem as z minus 3 equals a 12. When you have a plus minus beside each other, that's the same thing as saying z minus a 3. And you would do the same thing and add to still get 15. Um, on number 8, remember we learned the very first week of school that if I've got two negatives right beside each other, I'm going to get a plus sign. So I'm going to go ahead and connect those negatives in that parenthesis to make a plus. So now my problem is m plus 6 equals negative 7. So they may try and put two negatives beside each other to trip you up. Um, but now they're adding 6 to your variable m, so subtract 6 from both sides. 6 minus 6 goes to 0, leaving me with m equals. Um, negative 7, take away 6. I'm going to add them because they're both negative to get 13. So a negative 13. All right. Now, can get some harder with some decimals, but still ask yourself, what are they doing to the variable? Over here, they're subtracting 4.5, so I would add 4.5 to both sides. And I would get y equals, well, let me show you really quick how to add a decimal in the calculator. All right, so the decimal button's at the very bottom. Let's see if you can see it. Okay, so I would say 12.6, so 12. 0.6 is right next to the negative sign, and then I would add 4.5 to it if you wanted a calculator. If you want to do some mental math, go for it. So you get 17.1. All right. Why don't you try number 10 on your own, and then we'll deal with some fractions. So press pause and try number 10. Subtracted 48.9 on both sides. I did a smaller number, subtract a larger number, so I knew it was going to be negative. And then when I subtract them, I got 31.3. Okay? All right, let me know if you have any questions on one-step equations. Otherwise, we're going to switch to fractions. So, I'm going to teach you how to put a fraction in the calculator first. So, let's practice typing in one-half. Okay? You could do two ways. You could say... 1 divided by 2, and that's also a fraction of a half. Um, if you wanted to, you could put it in parentheses and say, hey, all this is together. It's a 1 half. Okay? The other way, which gives you the nice fraction bar, you're going to hit the alpha button, which is this green button right here on the top left of your screen. So you'll hit the alpha button, you'll hit y equals, and then you will hit enter. Yours will look a little different than mine. Mine doesn't work like that. But if you hit alpha y equals enter, it should work. Let me try this one. Alpha y equals in the top left. There we go. And then n slash d is numerator over denominator. So you hit enter, and then you have a nice fraction button. Okay? So we'll use that in a second. Let's look at some problems, though. So I have x minus a half equals 3 fourths. So they're subtracting a half. I'm going to do the opposite of subtracting and add. So I'm going to add a half on both sides. Okay? So I would have x equals 3 fourths plus 1 half. Now, if you can add fractions, fantastic. If you want to use your calculator, I'm going to teach you real quick. So I've got 3 over 4. You can hit this right arrow key to add or subtract. Add. Now I need another fraction button, so I'm going to hit the green button, y equals, and then enter, and do one half. One, go down, two. The nice thing about this is it gives it to you in a fraction form. Okay? So my answer would be five-fourths. 
Okay. Now, if you were to do it by hand, remember when you're adding fractions, you need the same denominator. So I would have had to make this a 4, so times it by 2, times it by 2. So then that fraction will become 2 fourths added to 3 fourths, and that's how you would get 5 fourths. So that's if you want to do some mental math with adding fractions, or you can type it in the calculator. Alright, so why don't you, we're going to do number 13 together, and then I'm going to have you guys try 12 and 14 on your own. Alright, so I see two negatives right beside each other, which means I need to go ahead and make a big plus sign. So my problem is j plus 5, 6 equals 1 and 1 third, okay? Since they're adding 5, 6, I'm going to take away 5, 6. These will go to 0, leaving me with j equals 1 and 1 third minus 5, 6. All right, let's teach you in the calculator first. So, first I need to do a 1, and now I need to input a fraction. So, I'm going to hit the green button, the y equals button, and then enter. Uh-oh, it put it up top. So, you can use these arrows to go through. I actually need to put a 1 out front. Now, my, or my numerator is a 1, my denominator is a 3. Okay, so that's how you type in 1 and 1 third. Take away, green button, y equals, enter, and then do 5 over 6. That will give you a lovely one half. Okay. Okay. If you need any help, type in a fraction in the calculator. Please let me know so I can come and show you. All right. So why don't you go ahead and try 12 and 14 on your own? Um, if you need any help, type them in the calculator, please let me know. Um, so press pause and try those two. So on number 12, they were subtracting 7 ninths, so I added 7 ninths. So I rewrote it 2 thirds plus 7 ninths. So again, I typed it in the calculator just like this with the green button and then the y equals button and the enter. Um, if you want to do it by hand, remember you need the same denominator, so you would times this bottom by 3 and times the top by 3. So you would be adding um, 6 ninths. And that's how you would get 13 ninths. Okay? Um, on 14, don't get tripped up by these two signs. I don't need that one. So I've just got a negative 4. Opposite would be adding a 4, 1 fourth. Um, so I have 5 eighths plus 1 fourth. Again, if you type it in the calculator, you should get 7 eighths. If you wanted to do it by hand, you need the same denominator. So if you times that by 2 and the top by 2, you would get 2 eighths. So then you could do 2 eighths plus 5 eighths to get 7 eighths. Okay? All right, so that's how you solve equations by adding or subtracting with fractions, decimals, and just integers. So now it's time to practice. Um, so you've got lots of options. You can do a practice worksheet, a boring little worksheet. You can do a riddle worksheet. You can do museology, one-step equations, and you can do a quizzes. And if you are not watching this currently in the school year of 2018, then this code won't work anymore. But if you're in 2018, this code will work. So thanks for watching, and go ahead and practice, and let me know if you need any help.